Hello. Welcome to my video. This will be a video on uh, software and what it is and uh, what the different types of software uh, you'll have or you'll find on your computer. This is a video for beginners so that they can uh, kind of figure out what type of software they have on their computer and what type of software they need. Um, so let's begin. So, what is computer software? Um, computer software, in simple terms, are programs and applications. And by software, for this tutorial, what I'm, I'm defining it is uh, applications and uh, programs. Um, and that is um, defining uh, programs and applications to mean the same thing as software, with a set of instructions that the computer uses to perform a task and or operation. Now what type of task and operation? That can be a lot of different things. Um, software application that I'm using to type out this um, tutorial is known as a word processor. And that means that it lets you type or process words on the screen and onto this document. Uh, so that's what a word processor is, and it is a type of uh, software application. There are many types of software that will allow you to perform many types of things on your computer. The type of things that you can perform are uh, only limited by your imagination. You can use software applications to create letters, emails, databases, uh, lists, grocery lists, to-do lists, reminders to yourself, presentations, surf the internet, and research subjects, or to make phone calls, connect to other computers, listen to music, look at movies, look at pictures, make pictures, make music, movies, and videos, and the list just goes on and on. Basically, you can use software to perform anything you can think of where a computer is concerned. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the basic two types of software. Okay? Software can be broken down into two main categories. And those categories is either it's open source software or it's closed source software. Uh, you may find a, a third kind called a hybrid software, but I'm not going to go over that. That's going to be too advanced for this tutorial. So, first let's go over open source software, or through the acronym OSS. Or you may have seen the acronym FOSS, free, uh, free open source software. But Open source software usually are programs that uh, when you get them, either by downloading them or buying them, uh, they're supplied both with the, the program itself and the source code. Now the source code are program instructions in their original form and usually with some type of license agreement that states that you can install them on however many uh, computers that you desire. Okay. Now, it should also be pointed out that just because you get open source software does not mean that it's necessarily free software. Most of the time it just happens to be that it is free, but there are certain open source software that happens to be um, that you might have to pay for. Uh, for instance, when I did not have a fast internet connection and I still wanted to buy a Linux distro, there were certain companies that would sell you the DVD. Okay, now technically they were not selling you the OS; they were just selling you the physical DVD and the shipping and handling to send to you. Okay, but just so you know, don't always think that because it's open source software, it means that it's going to be absolutely free. There may be a price to it, and there's no problem if it is. I just wanted to point that out. Uh, and the next type of uh, software is known as closed source software. Okay, uh, closed source software is probably what most people are used to seeing throughout their uh, lives when they deal with computers. Um, 
closed source software is on a majority of the computers that you will see when you uh, go to a store and buy it like at Best Buy, Walmart, um, uh, even even the store that uh, the brick and mortar store Tiger Direct now um, they well they've always sold computers but they haven't always been a brick and mortar store uh, any store most stores and most uh, computer shops that sell computers you will find closed sourced um, uh, software around them um, and what makes it closed source is is that even though you may get the operating system you won't get the source code uh, the source code the the uh, creator of that uh, software will keep for themselves okay so now that we know what software applications can do let's talk about more specific types of software let's start with a piece of software that most people don't uh, deal with directly and that would be an operating system or OS an operating system which from this point on we'll call uh, an OS is software that is used to help manage your computer system without getting too technical I'll explain um, how uh, an operating system manages your system in simple terms and this is just gonna be a real simple definition it's not even gonna take more than a few minutes okay basically uh, what your operating system does is it helps your software to communicate with your hardware okay that's basically all it is you've got your hardware like your keyboard your mouse your graphics card your network interface card sound cards modems hardware CPU RAM ROM all that all that is working together with each other through your operating system and that's basically all it does okay now let's go over some closed sourced operating systems um, one of them which most people is familiar with is known as micro Microsoft Windows Microsoft is a very large uh, software applications company and they create um, uh, the Windows operating system it's uh, very popular, very famous, and it is uh, used in a majority of the computers that sell on the general market today. You can find them at a lot of stores. You can find them at a lot of computer shops. Those are that's usually the operating system that will come on most operating on most computers, which is a Microsoft Windows. Okay, now. Um, and, and like I say, it comes pretty much standard, if not in all of the world, at least in the United States and most of the known Western world. Uh, Microsoft Windows is considered a closed source operating system. And by that we mean you may get the operating system, you may even be able to download the operating system, but no source code will come with that operating system. Microsoft is very squeamish about that. They keep their own source code. They don't let nobody look at it. Another closed source software is known as Apple. And Apple's latest uh, operating system known as OS X, that's an operating system that runs on most Apple, uh, um, Apple operated or Apple uh, hardware and, and, and software. I'm sorry, it runs on most Apple machines. Um, it runs on um, your, their Apple uh, computers, laptops, and most of their, their, um, their tablets. And, and yes, it is closed source. You may be able to download the Apple OS X uh, from a, a website or the upgrade OS X from the website but you will not be you will not be able to get the closed source of uh, OS X um, another closed source operating system is known as Solaris uh, Solaris um, was built and created I believe by Sun Microsystems when they first started um, and Solaris came on on uh, a computer 
that computer was specifically made for Solaris. I believe it was called a Spark or a Sun Spark uh, PC. Uh, and then uh, later on, um, Sun Microsystems got bought out by Oracle. And um, Oracle now has uh, Solaris and they, they uh, produce it as a closed sourced operating system. And um, as with all closed source operating system, they do not provide the source code for it. Uh, now they did have an, um, an open source version of Solaris and that was called Open Solaris, I believe. But they no longer have that, uh, that version out. Um, and so they just have Solaris, which is uh, a Unix operating system, and it is closed source. Let's see. So now let's talk about some open source operating systems. One of the most popular that, if, if, uh, if not all, many have heard of is called Linux. Linux is an open source uh, operating system and by that that means that when you download the operating system known as Linux you also get the source code and uh, what you a lot of people who are not in the computer or IT industry may ask what difference does it make whether or not you get the source code why do you need the source code um, the source code is really good for if you want to make your own personal changes to uh, that si that uh, software, that piece of software, whether it's an operating system, whether it's a, um, uh, a third-party application, or whether it's an application that comes natively with the operating system. If it's open source, that means that you can go into the source code and make changes, make your own personal changes, and usually under uh, open source it comes with a license that uh, that makes the agreement that if they sell it they also give you the open s uh, the, uh, the open the source code so that you can make those changes legally also with a closed source um, uh, software whether it's an operating system or in a lot of cases even if it's an application uh, if it's closed source, you only buy license per uh, machine. In other words, if you have 10 machines, you have to buy, uh, like let's say you got 10 machines and you want to put Microsoft on each one, Microsoft Windows. You have to buy a different Microsoft Windows DVD for each machine. Uh, that's per the closed source agreement that you will get when you have when you uh, get your Microsoft um, Windows, whether you download it or you buy it out of a store or and or from a vendor. Uh, that's that's with their uh, copyright agreement. You can only put one OS or you can only put one uh, Microsoft Windows CD on one computer. You can't take that same computer, uh, you can't take that same CD for Windows and put it on multiple computers. You have to buy one CD for each computer. And as you can imagine, that can get very expensive. But with your open source operating system and or applications, you can use one CD and install that CD on as many computers, machines that you are able to, that you want to. And according to the license agreement under most o uh, open source operating systems, that is completely free and legal. And uh, that's the reason why a lot of people like Linux. <coughs> Excuse me. It is very versatile. It is very um, free. <laughs> majority of it is free and uh, you can use it on as many machines as you want and it comes with a lot of applications that are also free and open source um, another operating system that is uh, open source is known as Unix Unix is a um, is a uh, uh, operating system uh, that comes in many different flavors just like Linux uh, you, we, we went over a few of them. Uh, OS X and Solaris are Unix operating systems. They're not open source, but they are Unix operating systems. Some other uh, Unix operating systems that are open source are 
No, well, the, f the BSD variations. There's free BSD, there's open BSD, there's PC BSD, and there's Dragonfly BSD. Now, these are by no means the only uh, free and open source Unix uh, uh, variations out there. Those are just the few that I have mentioned. There are many, many more, okay? And like Linux, with an L, okay, um, they're free and they are open source, a lot of them. And, and it's the same thing. You can take the uh, source code and modify them to your heart's content. Um, just as a quick fact, and if you, if you believe I'm wrong, you can correct me in the, uh, the comments below. OS X, which is uh, Apple's operating system, even though OS X is a closed source operating system, it was built and created off of FreeBSD. FreeBSD and, and then a variation of FreeBSD, which was called Darwin. But between Darwin and FreeBSD, they created it, or, or it was used to create OS X. So, just as a little small fact, you can't take um, open source operating systems and create your own form or variation of an operating system or an application and then repackage it as a closed source operating system. That is within the, um, your rights to do. Of course, if you use it as a closed source, you can't package it as a um, um, uh, uh, open source anymore. You'll have to repackage it under a different license. So let's go over some software applications. Um, and uh, as with operating systems, the software, third party software, what I call them, they also are under the category either um, closed sourced or open source. Okay? And so the different types of uh, these different types of applications you'll see on uh, most people's computers whether they're open source or closed source okay so the first thing that we can go over is uh, what is known as office suites and office suites are a combination of different uh, software applications that you can use for production whether you want to use it to uh, send out business mail a letter, a presentation, an email, or something like that. So, and they're known as, uh, I call it business suites or software business suites. Okay. Um, the first one we'll go over is known as Microsoft Office. Um, Microsoft Office, which is created by the Microsoft Corporation, it comes as a suite or in our, def our quick definition, a bunch of different software apps for, uh, you know, that are jumbled together into them, uh, an office suite. Microsoft Office is closed source. Um, once again, it's from Microsoft and uh, they, they usually, uh, they, they will sell you their products, but they will not give you uh, source code for a majority of it. Okay, um, and it usually comes bundled with, uh, these are not the only pieces, pieces of software that they come with, but these are the general pieces of software that comes with an office suite. They'll come with a word processor, okay? And all that is is just an electronic uh, uh, document that you can type in. They'll have a spreadsheet, and, and that's just where you can plug in different numbers and formulas and you know use it for tracking different stuff. Uh, they'll have an email client and that's that should be self-explanatory. An email client is used for sending and receiving email. Um, and they also have a presentation software. Okay, and that's for you know creating presentations, creating flyers, creating uh, big, uh, sophisticated types of um, uh, presentations that you're going to give in front of a 
in front of your business associates or or the people on the job okay and like I said these are considered basic applications they have more that comes with the Microsoft suite they have a uh, one note or you know and and they they got a whole lot of different applications that comes with a uh, Microsoft uh, office I just explained those four because those are the four that most uh, common people with computers will be using. Um, they also have uh, uh, database uh, uh, applications as well. And as we said, Microsoft Office is closed source and it does come from Microsoft Corporation. So let's see what we got here. Okay now we have some uh, office software business suite software that you can use but it's open source and not only is it open source it's also free um, one example is called open office open office is a free office suite and it has similar applications that Microsoft has and they are compatible with Microsoft now Open Office is under, um, I believe it's under, you can Google Open Office, but I believe now it's under the license of, uh, of Apache, which is uh, not only a web server, but it's also a group of uh, individuals or, or a company or organization that um, builds and license the Open Office uh, business suite. And as I said, it is usually compatible with Microsoft when uh, uh, Office. Instead of Word, it'll have it'll have a, a word processor known as Write. And instead of Excel, its uh, equivalent will be Calc. Um, I forget what the equivalent is for Outlook. And for PowerPoint, I think their equivalent is known as uh, Empress, which is a presentation software. Open Office, like I said, it is free. It is under the Apache license. If you Google it, you'll you'll find out more information about it. It's free and it's open source. Open source. The next one is uh, called LibreOffice. LibreOffice is also a free and open source uh, uh, business suite, and it is also compatible with Windows. Um, and uh, let's see, LibreOffice is fully compatible with Microsoft Office and has many, if not all, of the same types of applications as Microsoft Office. Okay, so instead of buying um, Microsoft Office, I mean, you can if you want to. It's a decent, it's a real good product. It's, it does work, um, but if you don't want to shell out all that money. I would suggest either buying LibreOffice or OpenOffice. Both of them are very good alternatives to uh, paying for a business suite. And then from there, some other types of software that we have are known as media players. Now, what is a media player? A media player is used for playing different types of media whether that's music whether that's movies whether that's videos either or it can be used a lot of them will play all three some of them only play one of one one different type there are a lot of media players mp3 players that only play mp3s which are for music and then there are a lot of media players that will play both music and videos They'll play MP3, which is uh, music, and MP4 or AVI, or one of those types of uh, uh, files. Okay, so let's go over a few. The first one we'll go over will be closed sourced, and that one is called Windows Media Player. Now, <coughs> Windows Media Player is a um, naturally it's a media player. You can use it for playing for uh, looking at movies or playing um, music excuse me it does come for free with Microsoft Windows although it is not open source it just comes as a free plugin for um, when you um, 
have Microsoft Windows installed on your computer. And as it says down here, it can play movies, TVs, TV shows, videos, and music. To find out what different types of uh, uh, files it can play, other than MP3, you can go to the Microsoft website and they'll go ahead and tell you more about what uh, files they play. Uh, but on average, they play AVIs, WMAs, and WMVs. If you want to know what those are, you can always Google them. And, yeah, like I said, Windows Media Player is closed source. They do not give out the source code for that, for uh, Media Player. Now we come to an open source Media Player. This is my favorite. It's called M Player, and then it has an updated version known as SM Player. Okay, uh, M Player is open source. It plays a lot of different media uh, files. Okay, it is currently available for most major uh, operating systems, and is very versatile and usable to play both music, movies, and videos. I use M Player a lot. That's my favorite media player. Um, it doesn't come uh, natively on uh, some Linux operating systems. Um, it did come with mine. I'm using Mint 13, and it did come as a media player with mine. But even if it doesn't, you can always download it for free. Okay, it and it works excellent with uh, Linux. Now here's a popular one that ev that a lot of people like. I don't use it very much. Not, uh, some people do. This media player is known as VLC. It is popular. It is open source, and it is free. It plays a lot of different videos. I have used it. It's not a bad video player. Uh, it's it's very good at playing videos. Um, I just prefer M Player. But you know, it's a matter of choice. So it's whatever you want. They are both good applications. They are both good for playing uh, different forms of media. Try them both, see what you feel. This is a new one that I tried a long time ago, but I just never got back to it. This one's called Miro, and I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. Um, but anyway, Miro is a media player. It does play a lot of media. I am gonna try it, um, but yeah, lately I haven't had, I haven't used it. But uh, it also works as a free media player. It is also open source. Not only does it play different media, I'm told from research it also makes a good BitTorrent uh, client. Uh, for those of you that want to know what is a BitTorrent, um, go ahead and Google that. There's a whole lot of information about BitTorrents on the web, on uh, on the web, but it says that Miro can be used as a BitTorrent client. I might try that as well. So, next, let's talk about some email clients. Um, I got one here. Let's see here. Let's start with a closed sourced one, and there are two that spring to mind. Um, I got Microsoft. Well, I don't got but um, there's one known as Microsoft Outlook Express. Microsoft Outlook Express is closed sourced, but it is free. It comes with every, dis every um, uh, install of Microsoft Windows, or at least the uh, consumer ones that uh, con regular consumers use. Um, it's easy to use, configure, and it's stable and reliable. Um, I have used it before in the past. Um, it is closed source, but it's uh, easy to use. It's good for sending and receiving your email, which is uh, what it's supposed to do. Um, and then another closed source one, which comes with Microsoft uh, Office, is uh, Microsoft Outlook. This one is a lot more full featured. Not only does it come with an email client, it also comes with different features like it comes with a, a, a calendar, um, it comes with a, um, an application for making announcements, 
and things like that. Um, I guess if you want to think about it, Microsoft Outlook is the big brother or the full version of Microsoft Express, Outlook Express. Um, you can buy you can buy most of your Microsoft products from your local store, um, whether it's Walmart, Best Buy, Office Depot, Office Max, or even online from possibly Newegg or Tiger Direct. Uh, keep in mind, uh, all Microsoft products are closed source, which means that you even if you can download the product, you're not going to get the source code. So. A free um, uh, email client is known as uh, Mozilla Thunderbird. Now, I've never used Thunderbird uh, as an email client, but uh, I hear it's very good. Uh, it is open source, which means that you can modify it to your heart's content, um, but it is an a email client. And uh, normally, it, as, as with most email clients, you use it for sending and receiving email. Evolution I have used. Evolution is very good uh, uh, email client. Um, I'm not sure if it's a client more than a, a suite of software that includes an email client, but in either case it works excellent. It has an email client that does good at sending and receiving email. It also is very good and very compatible with Exchange, which is Microsoft Exchange. Uh, so if you got a window, uh, if you have a Linux machine or um, a Unix machine, and you need to um, get in contact or or uh, hook up with a, a Microsoft Exchange server for your emails, Evolution is a very good uh, um, client to use. It is very good. It is very compatible. It's also open source and free. Let's see. Another open source email client is known as Claw. Now I've never used Claw email before. Um, I don't. I haven't heard any reports about it. Um, but from what little research I did, I heard that it's lightweight. Um, it is open source, um, and it's very flexible and secure. Uh, they make versions for Windows and Macs, as well as Unix and Linux. So. Um, Go out there, do some research on it, give it a try. So next let's talk about an uh, application known as an antivirus scanning software. Now, to give you a quick definition, antivirus scanning software is used for scanning and uh, deleting soft, uh, viruses off of your computer. It is very good for protecting your computer from viruses. Um, if you do not know if you have an antivirus scanning software on your program on your computer, I would suggest that you find out. If you do not have it, get it. Antivirus scanning software is very important for most computers. And yes, I know this, I know a lot of people are going to say so. Leave your comments in, in, in the comment section, but I would even suggest using it on a Linux system. Now, it's not because Linux will catch any viruses, but most people, even people that have a Linux machine, will share software with other people that have Windows machines. So before you do that, if you can use an antivirus scanning software on Linux to scan that application and make sure that it is safe and clean, then go ahead and transport it over to your, your buddy's uh, Windows machine. Anyway, that's my explanation. I know a lot of people may protest that, but that's what I that's what I would use it for, even on a Linux machine. Okay, but uh, it is very good to have an antivirus scanning software. It protects you from viruses, pop-ups, malware. Um, protects your sensitive informa information. Uh, now I put in here. Uh, it, it stops you it stops people from gaining access into your computer uh, not directly you may get a virus or some type of a Trojan that may uh, gain access or backdoor into your computer and then from there people or unauthorized people can get into your computer 
but what an antivirus scanning software will do is hopefully it will pick up on those different malicious ma malware type software or malicious type software and stop it from doing uh, bad things to your computer now Norton Internet Security okay um, this is good for uh, virus removal I'm not sure but it might also come with a combination of what is known as a firewall um, I'm not sure I've never used Norton Internet Security um, but Norton uh, which was developed by Symantec Corporation that's a very big corporation they're very big into uh, antivirus scanning software and firewalls don't worry we'll go over firewalls um, in just a moment uh, but it's supposed to scan your computer for viruses and uh, if it finds any delete delete it or quarantine it so but it is um, closed sourced which means they do not sell you the source code for their for their software so let's see we have Microsoft security essentials which is in itself uh, an antivirus scanning software Believe it or not, it is free and downloadable. I believe you can get a, a free version from uh, CNET.com. Um, but even though it's free, it's still closed source. They do not give out the source code for their software. And it is made by the Microsoft Corporation. But still, it's good if you need it to run on your uh, Windows system. It's still a good choice. I've used it before. It works very good. Um, as a matter of fact, on one of my Windows machines, I do have a Windows machine. It's a virtual machine, but it's still a machine that I use. Um, I do use Microsoft Security Essentials, and it works very well. Avast is another um, antivirus scanning software. It is free, but it is um, not open source. Um, they provide two versions. They, uh, the the Vast Corporation, I believe they provide a free version and a paid for version. So, um, if you go to their website, they'll give you more information about that. Clam, Clam is an, a free open source antivirus scanning software. You use it on a majority of the Unix and Linux operating systems. Um, Clamp AV is a command line uh, antivirus scanning software, but it does come with the GUI version known as Clamp TK. I've used both versions and this works out very well. Um, a lot of people that may be running um, a Linux or Unix type uh, email server or web server they use this and it works excellent it, it works very good it's very good at uh, catching the viruses and either quarantining them or deleting them and as with most open source software it is free um, and yes it is open source if you want to go ahead and open it up and tinker around with it AVG AVG is an antivirus scanning software program it is a very good one it is free. You can get it from the company of Grizzsoft. You can either download it from them or you can download it from uh, CNET. Um, like I said, it is free, but it is not open source. They sell both a paid for and a free version. Okay. They also have a version for Unix or Linux. Uh, I've never used the Linux version, but I have used the Windows version, and it works very well. Now we're going to move to the last type of software that we have or that that um, that I have to talk to about today. Um, this is by no means the only type of software, um, but there are many different types of software that you can use and install on your uh, system. But this is the last one we're going to talk about today. Um, and these are firewalls, firewall applications. Now, firewalls come in two different types. Not only do they come as open source and closed source, they also come as hardware firewalls and software firewalls. 
Whether it's hardware or software, they both do the same thing. And basically, what a firewall does is it uh, either allow or denies access to your computer. Um, based on a set of rules and policies that either you can that you can um, uh, uh, implement yourself or that come default when you download or install the firewall um, and that's basically what a firewall is um, let's see let's go over some closed source firewalls Windows operating system does come with a firewall okay um, you can set Set, uh, set it for denying for denying all incoming traffic and you can set up rules and policies for what outgoing policy uh, what outgoing traffic you want um, the firewall to let out uh, if you look at one of my uh, Microsoft Windows 7 um, videos I'll show you how to configure a Microsoft firewall um, so just go ahead and look for one of those. You can either find them at my uh, through my website, which is uh, learntechvids.com, okay? Or you can go through uh, YouTube and just look for my uh, videos under Ubuntu Max Full. But if you want to go to the website, let's go ahead and go there. It's going to be learn techvids.com this is my website that's the web address right there I'll highlight it for you and then you just scroll down and you can look at my uh, videos either through these links or you can get to them directly from uh, YouTube um, the one for uh, configuring the firewall if you go to the operating system tutorial link and from there if you go under Windows uh, let's see basic uh, it's gonna be one of these right here it's either gonna be part one two or three you can just go and look through each one alright so getting back to um, our firewalls, Microsoft has a firewall, uh, OS X has a firewall that is, um, that is configurable. If you want to know how to configure that firewall, I've never used OS X so I've never dealt with their firewall, but you can go to this, this uh, article right here that shows you how to configure it. Alright, also Symantec has a firewall. Um, I'm not sure if I've ever used their firewall. I haven't used, no, I don't think I've used Symantec er, uh, Endpoint before. Uh, Symantec is a very big business, is a very big corporation. They make a lot of good stuff. Um, some of their stuff may even, may even be free, but just remember it is closed source. Okay. Then you have your free uh, open source firewalls. I didn't mention any specific uh, open source firewalls because most of them come with your uh, Linux or Unix distribution. Okay, so um, some firewalls, I'll just name a few. You, um, you have Firestarter, which is a front end for IP tables. Uh, it's also a front end for um, for uh, the Ubuntu firewall, um, and I can't remember that firewall name off offhand. But uh, for majority of the firewalls, they are free, they are open source, and they come usually under Linux or Unix. And once again, if you want to learn more about firewalls and how to configure them, you can go to my website. Um, let's see, I have them under the same thing, learntechvids.com, and I believe if we come to computer security, right click on that link, go down, and here we go, UFW is the one that comes with Ubuntu, okay, um, I'm going to have more firewall um, videos soon. 
I'm going to have one. Um, I got one here on Ubuntu. I'm going to have one on um, CentOS for uh, the Red Hat version, which is uh, IP tables. That's the name of that firewall. The older version used to be IP chains, but they went ahead and uh, updated, and now they're using IP tables. So that's it as far as open source and closed source information. Um, that's basically what you're going to find on, on your operating system. It just depends on which one you buy, whether it's a Windows, whether it's um, an Apple OS X, or if you just download and uh, configure your own. Uh, which would be either a Linux or a Unix. Um, you will find a lot of, if not many, uh, of the mentioned um, uh, software that we went through today. So this was just a basic um, uh, breakdown of the different software that you may see on your uh, computer. Or if you don't have it and you do need it, this tells you what type of uh, software you can get. Um, and like I said, if you have questions on a lot of this, you can either go to my website or you can go to your uh, favorite search engine and type it in the search box and find out more information about it. So anyway, that's the end of this presentation. Like I said, this was for uh, beginners who needed to know about the different types of software that they can and should have on their uh, on their uh, computer system thank you very much thank you for watching this video and you have a good day